In this video, I want to look at the 12 steps I've identified that lead to success in the music industry. My name is Will from EDM Tips. I've been a music producer, mixing and mastering engineer for over 25 years, and I've spent the last six and a half years helping thousands of bedroom producers achieve success in the music industry. And after such a long time in the industry, there are a few patterns I've identified, both in myself, other professional music producers of varying levels of success, and of course, the things that differentiate my more successful students from my less successful students. So I'll put them into this list. I hope you find it useful. And with Without further ado, let's jump into the first one. Okay, the first is to develop what I call a fire goal. And this really is just to determine your absolute dream goal within the industry that really gets you fired up in your belly, gets you wanting to wake up and get at it in the morning. It could be something like Tour the World with David Guetta. It could be as simple as getting an album released. It could be producing full time for a living. But whatever it is, try and be as specific as possible so you can really visualize it. I like to write mine down every year. I just keep it on a post-it note or on my stickies on my desktop and I always also fill in the cheat sheet that I've supplied below this video too. This is so I've got something to look at to keep me fired up when times get hard, there are setbacks, and any of the other things that can just grind you to a halt. Writing down seems to solidify it, so let me know in the comments below what is your fire goal, what you really want to achieve in the music industry, and the second part of that is working out why. Why are you motivated to do this? I had to make a bit of an edit here because there's something I want to touch upon, and that is passion. The most successful people I've seen in the music industry and in life in general are passionate about what they do. But what does passion really mean? Well, the best definition I ever heard was passion is a combination of hate and love. So for example, you might absolutely hate the thought of lying on your deathbed and knowing that you never really gave music production a chance. Maybe you just hate the thought of having to do your day job for the rest of your life. Simultaneously, you might absolutely love the vision of you touring the world, playing your music to thousands of people and making money from the thing that you love. And that passion drives people forwards. And you can cultivate it in yourself. And something I've noticed in both myself and other people people that have attained any level of success is that quite often it's a traumatic experience that kind of solidifies this passion. I've seen people lose loved ones, I've seen people lose jobs, I've seen people get sick and realise they don't have that long left on this world. And at these points you have a choice. You can either let that break you down and, and stop you, or you can use it to galvanise yourself and add fuel to your fire to just commit to making this happen. And that is actually success step number two. Once you've decided on your fire goal, commit to that dream and just know that nothing Nothing is going to stop you getting there. This will help you find ways over, under or around any obstacle that might come into your path. Without a doubt, every producer that's achieved any level of success within the industry has had to push through some very difficult setbacks. Maybe they didn't have enough money to buy a piece of equipment. Maybe they grew up in a part of the world where there were no contacts, no nightclubs. Whatever the difficulty is, if you commit to achieving it, you will find a way. And the reason is you'll start asking yourself how to get past that difficulty. And it's incredible how creative a motivated human can be. Okay, number three is committing to one style of music. Now this can be hard if you like a lot of different genres, this is the case for me, but it was only when I decided to focus on house music that I started to make any headway. And that's because all of that focus and energy went on to making the best house music I could, rather than trying to decide what genre I should create next. A huge part of music production is making decisions, and if you commit to one genre of music, especially after perhaps the first year of dabbling and experimenting, you're already cutting out a bunch of options because there are certain rules by which you're going to have to adhere if that music is going to be able to fit into a house music set, for example. If you're struggling to decide on what music you really want to commit to, I recommend looking back at the playlists within your media player to find out what music you've really been listening to, because sometimes you can think that you love a particular genre of music, but when you look at your play history, you realise that actually it's a different genre. So that's just a tip you can use there. The easiest tip of all is which music do you like listening to the most? If it gets you excited, that's a very good indicator that's the genre you should be focusing on, rather than trying to follow trends. Now this takes me to my next point. If you're making music just for you, then you don't need to worry about what anyone else is doing. You don't need to worry about the market. But if you do want to get your music released and have an audience, it's good to understand what's popular at the moment and then analyse why it's popular and what's working. Find out who the top two or three producers in that genre are, listen to a lot of their music and work out what the top two or three labels are in that genre too. Again, listening to lots of music, discovering new artists. All of this will feed into your skills. Bonus tip, drink coffee.
Now, a common mistake I see producers making, especially if they're beginner producers, is thinking that they have to develop social media presence, get their music out there and promoted, but really, your main focus should be first getting good so your music is comparable to your favourite producers. When you get to about 90% of the way there, yes, you can start releasing your music, but if you're trying to build an Instagram following or a Facebook or TikTok following, that's time you could be spent improving your skills, and ultimately, those are the things that are going to make your music marketable. There are a couple of reasons why it's good to have some social media presence and I'll touch upon that shortly but I wouldn't be trying to build an audience. Okay success habit number five is set realistic sub goals. So if your goal is to tour the world DJing with David Guetta but you're only just starting out you need to have more achievable goals in the short term to keep you motivated. Now this could be being released on a particular label or collaborating with a certain artist who's a bit more at your level obviously hopefully a bit better than you are but this brings me on to the next habit which is developing process-based goals. Now what I mean by that is having a goal of taking the action rather than a goal of the outcome. Because if your goal is to be released on a label like Anjuna Beats, for example, there could be loads of reasons why your music isn't being released on it. Of course, it might not be good enough, but even if it is good enough, maybe there's no space on the release schedule. Maybe they're just not looking for that kind of music at the moment. Maybe they just missed the email. There are so many external factors that come into play that if all of your success is based on external goals, when something gets in the way and it doesn't happen, it's going to make you want to give up. Whereas a process-based goal, is something that you are entirely in control of. So if you commit to producing five to 10 hours per week, for example, that's a process-based goal. If you commit to finishing one track per month for a year, that's all something that you are entirely in control of. And every time you hit those process-based goals, you're gonna be better at what you're doing and you're gonna feel that release of endorphins as you hit a goal, which is very important because we all need to be making some progress, otherwise we'll get disheartened. So what I recommend doing is working out what your process-based goals are, have them fit into your schedule in a realistic fashion. So if you've got a full-time job or a family, probably don't say I'm going to produce 40 hours every week getting up at four in the morning each day because it ain't going to happen, okay? But if you can focus on your music for five and ideally 10 hours per week, there is no way that you are not going to be getting better. So you can schedule those sessions into your calendar in advance, maybe even a year in advance. And it doesn't mean that you're dogmatically going to have to stick to everyone, but at least you've got a framework where you can start making progress. Okay, success habit number eight, and that is self analysis. So with every track you finish, it's your duty to listen to that music, compare it to your reference tracks and work out where your weak spots are. And we all have weak spots and all you can do is identify them, then make them better. Do you struggle with melody and harmony? Is it the sound design or the sound selection you're struggling with? Is it your mix that doesn't sound great? Maybe you don't know how to sound design. Maybe you don't have enough good samples or presets. Whatever your weak spot is that's holding you back, it's best to focus on that because that's going to be the bottleneck. Which brings me to my next point. Get Get your shit together. And what I mean by that is be prepared. And that generally means knowing how to use your DAW. Just spend a couple of hours learning how to use it, look up some YouTube videos, work out some useful keyboard shortcuts. Next thing is getting a solid base of samples because these are your ingredients. So do some Google searches. Which are the best sample packs for your genre? Which are the best preset packs for your genre? Get them organized, get them in your door, get all your ducks lined up. Okay, success habit number nine is realizing that effort in and of itself is not enough. That's why we touched upon the self-analysis. An analogy of this is if you were in a swimming pool, expending loads of energy, just scrabbling around, you'll never get to the other side of the pool before you run out of energy and drown. That's a bit dark. But if you can either analyze your own actions or better still get a coach to see what you're doing wrong, you can expend less energy and get to the other side of the pool. So effort in and of itself is not enough. You have to actually be providing value and you do that by making better music. Now knowing that, one of the things that made the biggest difference for me in music production and with YouTube actually, was seeking mentorship from other people who have done what I wanted to do. It can literally shave years off the learning curve and then you've got someone in your corner as well, giving you encouragement when you're struggling and pointing out the pitfalls and where you shouldn't be spending your time. So seeking mentorship and valuable feedback is success habit number nine. Now number 10 is community and networking. And this is why I said it's good to have a social media profile so you can reach out to people and take part in communities without wasting time trying to build an audience. Every opportunity that you have in the music industry comes through other people. So if you can provide value to them in some way, you never know how that's gonna come back and repay you. Now that could be offering to do a free remix for someone. 
That could be offering to DJ in a club for free for a couple of sessions. Whatever it is, if you can reach out to people online or even better in person, you're going to start building a network of people and three or five years down the line, there could be an opportunity and someone's going to think of you and they're going to say, this is the right guy or girl for the job. That's happened to me countless times. So if you always try to identify the people within the industry and specifically within your genre and then think of ways you can make their life easier, I promise you it's going to pay dividends in the long run. That could be liking and sharing an artist's music. It could be supporting them by buying their merchandise or going to their gigs. There are so many options now when it comes to social media, but identify what those communities are within your genre and take part of them. Be an active, useful, productive member of that community. Number 11 is the ability to not take things personally. Now, this is difficult, especially when it comes to feedback, because for example, music production is always going to be something personal of us. So when someone doesn't like it, it's easy to take offense at that. But even though it's difficult, it's an essential skill to learn. And if you seek feedback from the right people and invite them to give you honest feedback, it will make them feel comfortable to be honest and they will have your best interests at heart. If you make trance and you ask your friend who listens to rock music if he likes your trance track, he's probably going to say no, even if it's the best produced trance track. Whereas if you ask your mum whether she likes it, she's going to say yes whether it's any good anyway because she's your mum which is why seeking feedback from the right people is important, as well as being able to take constructive criticism. Now, sometimes you will just get haters and it can be hard to differentiate between constructive criticism and useless vitriol. But if someone's feedback is insulting you personally, the chances are that's not useful feedback. If someone's critiquing the work, the chances are that is useful feedback. Now, success habit number 12 is ultimately just showing up, putting the work in, being persistent and never giving up. If you never give up, you can never fail. All of the producers of ever seen that have attained any success whatsoever, including my students, including myself, including all the famous producers I've met, has been that they simply keep on going. They keep improving and they are committed to mastery and continuing the process. Now the bonus step that I'm going to add, which I forgot to write down in my list, is actually understanding the industry. So if you ultimately want to make money from your music, play gigs, release tunes, get them synced to TV or movies, do some research on how the industry works, who publishers are, who agents are, what licensing is, and just get a feel and a deeper understanding of the industry that you're going to be entering into. Now, one very common goal that many of my students have is to get signed to a record label. And who better to ask how to achieve that than the record label himself? So I interviewed the head of A&R at Anjuna Beats, one of the most popular trance music labels in the world. And Adrian very kindly shared so many golden tips that are going to help you get signed, not just to Anjuna Beats, but any record label. We go into what A&Rs actually do, the kind of music that they're looking for, and the tips and tricks you can employ to get your music heard and signed by the record label you want. So you can check that video out right here. But before you do that, if you enjoyed this, found it useful, give it a like, download that cheat sheet below this video and consider subscribing to my channel for music production tips each and every week. And thank you for watching. I will catch you over at that next video with Adrian.